Agatha is the gayest Marvel project yet. Do you agree? I, it better be, because that's, that's what I signed up for. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Let her cook. Eh? She spins and kisses Rio, a kiss that consumes her as she fades into... Boom! Ah! I saw you die. Yeah, and now I'm a ghost. Can you dig it? <laughs> no, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Listen, I am not going to start off this video as if I am just some huge Agatha stan, or Wanda fan, or witch fan, or anything like that. Well... And you lose control, I'm a hex girl, and I'm gonna put a spell on you. But I am an MCU fan, and it's just the fact that even after watching a show like Agatha all along, a sequel show to an original show that already had a sequel movie, in a way, kind of, or... I guess adding on to this whole magical side of the MCU, it's just another slap in the face to us the audience of simply how incompetently run Marvel has been over the last couple years, and how the entire process of how Marvel has been making these streaming shows, what Marvel is looking out of these streaming shows, and most importantly, the vision they have for these streaming shows has been broken for quite some time, when the problem is, nothing has changed when it comes to the audience, and Agatha All Along really showcases that. What I mean by that is that Agatha All Along is one of those rare MCU streaming shows that legitimately checks off all of the checkboxes when it comes to pitching an actual streaming show, with the most important checkboxes in my opinion from the top to the bottom being 1. Is there a vision or path for this show that is being pitched? 2. What is the budget for that said show that you are pitching? And 3. With this one being the most important question when it comes to the decision of actually making that said show that is being pitched, is there a target demographic and audience for that said show? Listen, Agatha All Along isn't going to be for the everyday MCU fan, and while you shouldn't confuse that sentence with me saying that this show isn't made for the everyday MCU fan, because those aren't the same intentions when you look at them from a studio's point of view, and how that could be looked at as alienating the audience, I don't think this show was really pitched with the intention of being for the everyday MCU fan, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's relatively obvious, either from the marketing campaign or the characters that are involved, that this is a show made for an audience that liked and cared about WandaVision, and with the LGBTQ community and lady demographic being that majority audience, because, let's be real, I personally have not gone back and rewatched a sole episode of WandaVision after that first initial watch through because I could not be bothered with that storyline or those characters. And because of that, it would make sense that the vision, path, and creative direction this show took in regards to its story, characters, and themes reflect that audience that does care. And that certainly doesn't make the show inherently bad straight out of the gate. Quite the opposite, in fact, because somehow, some way, even to my shock, Agatha all along has stumbled its way, or crafted its way, into actually being a pretty solid MCU streaming show. Narrated by an extremely detailed and character-driven plot that finds its way to not only introduce us to possible key players in the MCU 10 years down the line, but also takes the time in order to create some pretty impactful and emotional character relationships and dynamics for this specific story, and because of that said impactful character writing and streamlined narrative, Agatha all along isn't shackled by the same pacing issues that have plagued the majority of MCU Disney Plus shows, all culminating in a two-episode finale that really breaks more MCU power scaling, which kind of pisses me off, but eh, classic MCU at this point, but a conclusion to a story and intro to a character path that is more than likely satisfying to the majority of the audience. But I think what helped really separate this show from the usual Marvel streaming poo on a screen was just how immersive and engaging the show looked and felt because of the choice of choosing the opposite path of what most MCU projects are going down and using the practical effects route. From the setting itself of the woods and the houses to the monsters, especially that insidious demon looking monster that plagued Alice, 
to the makeup department and the costumes that they were wearing. It was just relatively obvious that behind the scenes, everyone's head was in the game when it came to the vision, direction, and product that they wanted to give the audience. And in a time where I can admit that I was a heavy skeptic and simply just not interested in these characters or corner of the MCU that they're building up, Agatha all along really did exceed my expectations. But that's enough yapping. Let's talk. As always, I'm going to keep this pretty short and to the point. As the marketing suggested before the show even aired, Agatha All Along follows the side character of an original show that already got a sequel movie, Agatha Harkness. Post Wanda's demise at the end of Doctor Strange, Agatha finds herself being released from her spell from a mysterious boy who turns out to be Wanda's fake witch kid, Billy, who is real now. With Billy on the path of figuring out who he is, his new life, as well as searching out for his lost brother, the two set the course down the Witch's Road, a road or journey for witches said to grant whatever that witch desires upon completion. The only problem is, is that a coven is needed for that said journey. And with that, you the audience watch as our coven of witches journey down the Witch's Road, all with their own selfish goals and desires in mind. But will our witches have the strength that is needed to complete the path Will the insidious nature of Agatha's past and present continue to destroy the people and relationships around her? Will Billy take after his mother in the sense of how he handles his newly awakened powers? Or has the covenless witch had nefarious intentions all along? Throughout the lifespan of my channel, I have preached the problem of how divided, fractured, and at war our audience's studio relationship has been over the past couple years. Hollywood, Disney, and the people that run the MCU are just extreme blokes and while i'm probably giving them too much credit for even asking this do we think marvel even has the capability competence or foresight to even see the lesson or at least the pattern of success that has pretty much smacked them in the face when it comes to the audience reception of this show who knows and don't get me wrong i'm not here to toot the same horn like those said oblivious blokes and act as if there isn't a difference between audience reception and the size of the audience overall in its retention. That's a problem that the Acolyte fans are facing right now. Or were facing, I guess. But when you really take a step back and look at the grander picture of what the audience has been asked to stomach over the past couple years of the majority of mid-on-a-screen Disney Plus shows, either through self-sabotage, overall direction, or just quality from project to project, In reality, I'm not quite sure what comes off as a bigger surprise for some of the audience, and more specifically, the MCU fandom as a whole, as we wrap up the end of our 2024 Hollywood filler arc. The fact that Agatha All Along, again, a sequel show to a side character for an original story of an original character that already had a sequel movie, might be a top 3 Disney Plus multiverse saga show, that's top 3 out of 11 shows, a pretty solid feat no matter the quality of service, not to mention throwing her hat in the ring of potentially being heralded as a top 10 multiverse project as a whole, a pretty solid feat no matter the quality of service, but a sequel show starring a side character from an original story of an original show of a character who is now dead in the present timeline. I mean, this was a character that I, and I imagine the majority of the MCU fans, had no concept of all the way back when the MCU was kicking off with the multiverse saga with WandaVision. And sure, in hindsight, that was during a pandemic, and the multiverse saga hasn't really maintained the best reputation with its fan throughout its lifespan. But that is not at the fault of Agatha all along, and it's incredibly impressive the creative vision, dynamic character writing, incredible practical effects, engaging performances, and overall world building they were able to craft from this corner of the MCU. And that's more that could be said than for She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Echo, Moon Knight, and other shows not named Loki, Loki Season 2, WandaVision, or Miss Marvel were able to do. And that is a feat, no matter how you look at it. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, Agatha All Along was an A for effort show, and a Marvel show that truly goes to show that if you have a vision, a modest budget, and a target demographic, that you can really make that escapism that the audience is so desperately looking for when it comes to their favorite characters or fandom. Shout out to Agatha. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. 
make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.